everyone. Welcome to another session of Value and Analyzing Companies. In today's session, I will be assessing the fair value of equity in Disney. The ownership in this business from all time high is down about 50%. Uh, year today is about 40% down. As of November 11th of 2022, the stock is uh, trading about $95 per share, which translates to about $169 billion in market cap. In the next 10, 15 minutes, I'll be performing a DC evaluation. I'll talk about what I would think would happen to the business. That would be my judgment. And based on that, I will come up with the equity uh, value in the business. The link, this call app file, which has the model and all the information that I use is included in the description of this video. In addition to that, the link to the DCF model that I have developed with Python will be also in the description of the video. If you like to value Disney with the different parameters in the model, feel free to use them and come up with fair value of the business from your point of view or any other business. So with that said, let's dive into this. The revenue since 2012, that was about 40 billion has grown to 80 billion, 81 billion in, this, in, in over 10 years of revenue has doubled. Uh, of course, it wasn't all organic. Um, Disney has made acquisition, number of acquisitions in between. Star Wars, 21st Century Fox company uh, that was done in 2018, which I think was a terrible uh, uh, acquisition. We're going to get into those details. But overall, the gross profit margin has been about you know, 40%, currently it's about, you know, 36%. So we see the decline in the growth, in the gross profit margin. And in terms of operating margin, that number has, you know, before the Fox acquisition was about 25%. And post Fox acquisition, which was in, in, in March, 2019, this number has been heading down, down. And then the pandemic was a perfect storm to, you know, push this number to negative, which means no company is losing money. And now they're recovering. So turning 12 months as of July uh, of 2022, because the third quarter of September are not filed with SEC yet. And I don't, that's why I don't have the number. Um, the turning 12 months based on that would be about 8%. For that quarter is about 11%. For the most recent quarter, Q3 of 2022, that number is about 2.7. That's one of the reasons the stock has tanked, which is they went off track of the recovery in terms of operating margin. Now, they also announced they're laying off some employees. So they're really looking for savings and trying to make the company more efficient. But I tend to think, you know, the company should look harder in terms of like getting savings, not through the SGA and, you know, laying off people, et cetera, but in terms of like how they invest and how they execute uh, their strategy. Operating margin is like 8% in 12 months and used to go 25%. So the big question is if Disney is really able to recover and get there. Uh, the current ratio, which is, you know, total asset divided by total liabilities is about 1.2. If you had just exclude the goodwill value for the total liabilities, total asset divided by total liability, that number is about 2, 1.2, uh, which is okay. And the debt token ratio is about 30%. So the firm is, um, you know, is as levered as it could be. Uh, I don't really would think it would be wiser for them to borrow more money, but it's not too levered to give you too much concern about risk. Let's see what's ha been happening with return on invested capital. Well, the return on invested capital before you know the Fox acquisition was about 15, you know, 11, 12 uh, percent. But since then, it's been heading down. Then this is the pandemic effect, and then they've been trying to recover, but Still, you don't see that they're making 3% relative to all the assets that invest in the, in, the, in the business, which is not really impressive. And here's, here's, you see that, here's, you see this, this is the sales to capital ratio. Uh, that number has been somewhere between 90 to 70 cents. Uh, let's take the midpoint about 80 cents. And then right after the acquisition, you see the goodwill jumps from 30 billion to 75 billion, right? I mean, they, they pay about the, 40 billion extra, 45 billion extra for the Fox acquisition. And you know, the sales to capital ratio, you know, starts to shrink and, and slide down. And you know, they are recovering now, but it's still they're far, far away from where they used to be. So that's really at the core of the problem. They paid too much. They really destroyed value in my in my view. And it's pretty interesting. Look at this chart. Look at this chart. This is 
revenue and then operating income. This is pretty interesting. See, you see like two cluster here. It's like you're looking at two different companies. And when you look at these dots, all of them, this is 2020, 2020, 2021, 2021, 2021, 2021. This is taking 2021, 2020 March, uh, 2022, uh, 2019. 2019, 2019, 2022, and 2022. Seems like after 2019, this company is just like being diverging from how it was being run. The profitability in the business has been getting lower, and it's just a different company, seems like it. Anyway, uh, currently the risk free rate, the 10 year T bond rate, is trading about 4%. The equity risk premium which is how much the stocks are expected to earn over the long run, five, 10 years is about 5%, 5.3. The terminal cost, pre-tax cost of debt, I assess that number to be about six and a half for Disney as of now, uh, based on what the AA being priced in the bond market. The terminal pre-tax cost of debt, I assess to be about 4.8%. The equity value based on the current market cap is 169. The debt value on the balance sheet is about 51 billion. You have about 15 billion in cash and cash equivalents and long-term investment holding in other companies. The unlevered bail assets to be about nine based on the regression that I found that I have fit across you know theme park like six six flag company, Comcast, and Netflix and so on. I took the median and unlevered it. The terminal unlevered beta assets to be at 0.95. Uh, the beta begins to converge within one year. Uh, current effective tax is about 20%. And as we progress through time. Disney start paying this marginal tax, which is about 24%. Um, that number from 20 starts to converge to 24 within 10 years, within three years. The revenue base for the trading 12 months is about 82 billion. And what I'm assuming is revenue is going to grow uh, for the next three years from 1 to 5%. Then from year 4 to year 7, that's going to be growing from 4 to 8%. And then from year 7 through year 11 that number is going to grow from seven to four percent and that's the terminal growth rate i'm giving them a four percent according to what sits in the 10-year t bond rate so the current sales to capital ratio we saw that number that deteriorate has been deteriorated but i'm going to assume that most of the inf infrastructure in the business is set up they've made the acquisition now they have to monetize they have the disney plus they got the, the the platform set up so now they have to go to execute and they don't have to reinvest as much and that's why i'm you know i'm giving them credit uh instead of giving them you know 70 percent 70 cents to invest for every dollar to generate revenue i'm going to assume they're going to reinvest about 85 cents i'm giving them credit for that and over the valuation period, I'm going to reduce that number to 70 cents per dollar. That convergence is going to start from year three. And here is really the core of this valuation. The current operating margin is about 11%. And since all these numbers are from next year and move so on, you know, I'm going to assume they're going to recover. I'm going to tell, I'm going to say, you know what? They're going to go from 12% to 21% in operating margin. And their recovery starts from next year immediately and um this is a very obvious story very obvious story and see where we get so these are the revenue as you see it's going to go from 81 to 144 it's going to about to add another 60 billion within the next 10 years the margin is going to recover from 12 to 21 percent here's my ebit earnings before interest and taxes your sales to capital ratio for every dollar that they grow, that they get as a growth and revenue, they have to reinvest into the business. And that's why you have this column that we has very reinvestment. This is the after tax operating income. You subtract the reinvestment from them, then you get the free cash flow to the firm. This is the reinvestment rate. And this is present value of free cash flow to the firm. So then this is the cumulative weighted average cost of capital, which is about 9% 9, 9 for Disney based on current condition in the market. All this valuation over the next 10 years, this is my terminal year. What do I get? Sum this column up. I get the value of operating assets, which is 153. Add cash, subtract debt. I would get the intrinsic equity value in the business, which is 117. 
the stock is trading about 169 billion. I still think about you know 30% downside. But and it's a very obvious story. What if you have to believe is business is going to recover it's in uh, getting its nice operating margin that it used to have. Some of you may not believe that. Some of you may think, well, you know what, Disney Plus and ESPN and Hulu and all that stuff is going to be even better uh, in terms of profitability. But, you know, when I look at this, when I look at Netflix, right, because I have the Netflix operating margin adjusted for R&D, Netflix, you know, the operating margin is about 24%. Or you know, of during the pandemic, which they were really making a lot of money, I was about 20%. 2021 was about 22%. So I don't have any reason to believe why for Disney is going to be different. Like they need to get about 26 or 27%. Could be possible, but I don't know if it has a high probability. Again, but this is a point estimate. So you know, in order to deal with this uncertainty, I do a Monte Carlo valuation. It's really not rocket science it's coming up with a different range for different parameters that went to the model that we just looked at and think about about the ranges of possibility and what would the equity value in the business would be the main parameter in this model which is very important is the terminal operating margin and i'm assessing that this number is going to be somewhere between 17 to 25. it's a trinomial distribution uh, you can look it up. The, the center of the distribution is about 20%, very similar to the point estimate. The lowest point is about 17, and the highest point is about 25. So I'm seeing, okay, you know what? You know, Disney could grow from the terminal operating margin could be somewhere between 17 to 25, and the terminal operating margin, let's say it's going to be somewhere between 10.5 to 13, right? And then with that said, and then bringing you know, the growth rate that I have about revenue with some standard deviation around them, uh, what would be the, you know, the reasonable range for the equivalent business? And that's what you would get this histogram because I do 10,000 DCFs and then I draw the histogram. So my low would be 97, median would be 111, and my highest would be 85 percent, that would be 127. This is the reasonable range that, you know, Disney could be trading. And I see this number being 170. I really can't figure out how to get there. Like this is a very has been having a very low probability to get there. So with that, I can wrap up. I hope you found this session useful, and thank you very much for listening. And I see you in the next video.